Hey, it's Dr. Scott Watson here with another finale video, how to turn a lead sheet into a rhythm chart. So first of all, we've been looking at a series of videos on creating first a simple and then a mid-level and then an advanced lead sheet. If you're interested in lead sheets, check out my other videos on lead sheets. But in this video, we're going to take one of these lead sheets. Actually, we're going to take uh, the old hymn, Holy, 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 the lead sheet for that hymn, and we're going to turn it into a rhythm chart. So what's a rhythm chart? A rhythm chart is sort of like a, a lead sheet on steroids. It's It's got the melody and it's got the piano part realized or figured out for the piano player. It's got a bass part realized for the bass player and it has drum parts added in. So when you have a rhythm chart, you really have um, essentially all the rhythm instruments uh, playing the parts they would play or that they would execute if they were looking at a lead sheet. So it's, it's much more descriptive of what's happening in the arrangement. So let's go back to this lead sheets and go step by step how to turn this lead sheet into a rhythm chart. All right, step one, we're gonna add new staves for the piano, bass, and drum set. To do that, we're gonna go into Finale's score manager and we're just going to say add instrument. Um, we can say keyboards, piano, that'll be our first one. And then for bass, uh, go into say pop rock and pluck strings and electric bass. And then for drums, we'll go into that same pop rock and drums and drum set. Now, when we go back to the score, we'll see that we have those staves. Now, we're going to use the page layout tool, um, adjust this left margin, sort of bring this in a little bit here. And if I'd like to get more than one system on a page, there's all sorts of things we can do. I could just apply a percentage reduction up here and say instead of 100%, um, let's say 90% for all the pages, you know, page one through the end of the piece. See if that brings more than one system uh, per page, which it does. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted. Okay, I don't want the measure numbers to appear like they do on the top staff of the piano and the, the electric bass. I really just want it on that bottom staff. So I'm gonna use the staff tool and go into the edit uh, staff attributes here. And let's just go um, down to that uh, electric bass staff, or actually to the top piano staff and turn off the measure numbers there. And then let's go to the electric bass staff, turn off the measure numbers there. And so now we'll only have our measure numbers um, just underneath each system. And that's that's kind of what I want. Okay, our next step is to realize the piano part. Realize means to make up the piano part. So we'll use the chords that we have in our lead sheet and we'll uh, assign actual notes. I'm gonna jump down to measure five and just um, using speedy entry, I'm gonna click in this right hand piano. We need a D chord. So here are some of the notes for the D chord. I'm gonna just type the shortcut five, get a couple beats of D. Let's do a couple beats of B minor, couple beats of A7 and then a couple beats of D. I also want to get the left hand in those same measures. I'll just use half notes. So I'm using the shortcut six for a half note. And uh, now we've just done two measures. So uh, it would take a while to actually create this piano part, but that's exactly what we would do. We'd fill out the, the piano part for the entire piece and then we'd move on. Okay, you can see I went ahead and put in the entire piano part, and now I'm going to do the same thing for the bass part. You can use any note entry method you like. I'm going to use speedy entry. If you want some help on using speedy entry, check out my video on creating a simple lead sheet where I do go in great detail on how to use speedy entry as well as hyperscribe, which is real time playing. Um, so let me just go ahead and click on my bass uh, part, and we're going to go ahead and just put in that. Um, uh, left hand of the uh, the piano kind of uh, will be my bass part at least at first. So here I go, just putting in, you know, using the speedy entry method. Um, I could actually vary it. So for instance, here if I wanted to do like a dotted quarter and an eighth and um, you know, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the entire bass part. Realize the bass part would be the next step. Okay, using a little video magic, we fast forwarded to where we already have the entire bass part realized. Notice that the bass part has kind of idiomatic bass um, uh, figures and gestures. So it's not exactly like the left hand of the piano. And that's more interesting for the bass player anyway. Um, also, as we put more notes in, we really do have to update the layout a little bit. Uh, we're starting to get kind of crowded between the lyrics of the, the lead line and the right hand piano. So I'm going to use my staff tool and just double click hold and pull this down and just put some space there. Um, I need to reduce the, um, the score even more. We had it at 90%. Let's put it at 80%. 
and uh, that gets those two systems still on the page. Um, maybe I want a little bit more room between the bass and the left hand piano. Again, using the staff tool, double click, hold and drag. So you'll, you'll just have to do this as you go until it gets to be the way you want it. So now I have some room to add the chord symbols that we want. And that's our next step is we're gonna copy the chord symbols from our lead and then put it in uh, at the top of the piano and the top of the bass so that those players, even though they have a written part, they also have the chords if they want to comp and uh, improvise a little bit. All right, so to copy the chord symbols, we're going to use our edit filter. We go into the edit menu, um, say edit filter, and what we're going to say is, um, I'm going to just say none right now, so nothing will be copied. And then I'm going to say I only want to copy the chords and fretboards. So once I say that, I can select this uh, entire staff, click to the left of the, the vocal staff, and then copy that or use the shortcut command C. And then I'm gonna click on the right hand piano and then say paste that and it's only going to paste the chord symbols, right? It didn't paste any of the notes. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the bass part here and say paste. So we're pasting just the chord symbols um, from the, um, the lead line. Okay, now that we have the chords copied into the piano and bass part, we can remove them from the lead vocal line. So let's select that go to the edit menu and say clear selected items. We're just going to select chords and fretboards and clear those and say okay. And notice that the chords and fretboards are now gone from our lead uh, line. And let's maybe save this. We've I've been saving all along actually, but you should be saving every time you do a step. So I'm gonna just save that, save it somewhere that you can find it. Um, and do we need to update the layout now that we have the chords in? You know, are the chords uh, close to anything? I think we're pretty good. After you get your chords copied over from the lead line to the piano and the bass part, I would strongly recommend that you choose the chord tool, go into the chord menu and disable the chord playback. We don't want those chords to play back. Now we have the piano part, actually realizing the piano um, chords and we have the bass part actually realizing the bass chords so we don't need finale to sort of redundantly duplicate that we, we just want to turn that off okay our next step is to create the drum parts I have an entire video on creating drum parts and finale check that out for all the details on how to use speedy entry and getting layer one and layer two layer one is where we're gonna put the symbol in the snare layer two is where we're gonna put the bass I'll just show you um, a measure or two of that here's our snare drum Here's our ride symbol. So for instance, um, after a rest, maybe I have something like this. Um, and then in the next measure, I have something like this and that. All right, so I've got that layer one, and then I'm gonna go back here and switch to layer two. And again, this is just in that other video I have on putting in drum parts. Uh, so in layer two, we'll start with a rest and let's put our bass drum part in just here, have some quarter notes and then a dotted quarter. Um, an eighth and then a quarter and a rest. So we'll go in and put the drum parts in throughout and we'll move on. Okay, and now that we're done the drum parts, you'll notice that in some cases I just use slash notation to say keep playing the same thing you've been playing. You don't have to actually notate in a, in a rhythm chart every single measure for your drummer. Also, now we need to uh, clean things up. So for instance here where I have a, um, a section heading, it was right on top of that forte that I gave to the drummers. Or I could move the forte, you know. So we have to do some things that might involve, uh, like down here, might involve some formatting. I'll, I'll choose the staff tool. Maybe I can move up this electric bass part a little bit and move down the drum part a little bit and get, get a little more breathing room in there. Um, and maybe I need to move this first system using the um, page layout tool, maybe move this first system up a little bit like that. So we're gonna have to tweak um, the layout so it looks professional and consistent uh, all the way through. We just don't want any collisions of, of uh, elements of the score, one on top of the other. So we have to check uh, thoroughly for that. And the other thing is we wanna play it, right? We wanna see, does it sound uh, like we, what we imagined? So let's go ahead and give it a listen. Here are our drums and our bass and our piano playing this um, holy, holy, holy arrangement. Here we go. Right, there's that bass part. Yeah, so it sounds... Right, we've got the 
you know, the essence of the arrangement captured in that rhythm chart, more than say a lead sheet, it, it gives the players a lot more definition of what they're supposed to do. Um, it still, because it has the chord symbols, leaves the players some room to, uh, to improvise and to, to make it their own. That sort of shows us how the arrangement's going to sound, but again, with real players, it's going to be much, much more expressive and, and less synthy. But it's a great start for um, showing what your arrangement will sound like. And to share this, we might want to go ahead and say file print. Um, I like to always say fit to page with Finale so that whatever page size I'm using, it'll fit on the page. And then um, save it as a PDF. Let's put it on the desktop. And now uh, let's go ahead and look at that PDF. And there it is. So now we have all of these parts that we can share with others.